No, with the farrier industry, we have extensive training to be farriers. We learn how to remove shoes. We normally apprentice so that we, it gives us time to develop the skills to be able to be total hoof care providers. We don't get to trim feet from day one. We get to learn to handle horses, take shoes off, clinch, so we're developing hand skills. And so most people's training is over quite an extensive period of time. But what we're competing against in the barefoot industry is short courses. You know, it's almost evangelical short courses that convince people that they can learn to shoe horses and be barefoot with very little practical experience. If we looked at the, compare with something in humans, if we look at um, the beauty industry, you know, with the beauty industry, they have to have a significant training to be hairdressers. And that's a theoretical training and the, the training of practical training on the job. Well, if I have a bad haircut, it's just going to leave me at a bit of a disadvantage for a few weeks. You know, I might look, not look so pretty. But it's different for a horse. If he doesn't have an, an appropriate trim, then um, he's going to put up with sore feet, inappropriately balanced feet, for the next six weeks until it's trimmed appropriately. We come from a traditional industry, and over the last 30 years, because of events like the Hoof Care Summit and the clinics and conventions that go on, farriers have had to think about what we do to horses, how we affect them how we affect them with the trimming, with shoes, what type of shoes, shoe placement, how that shoe placement will affect the motion of the horse. And this has started off very much as an anecdotal teaching, but we've gone into a lot of depth now and science is being involved in our industry. And the only way forward for me with athletes and working horses is to make them as comfortable as possible. I basically have two goals when I shoe a horse. I want to maximize performance and prevent injury. And if I can do those two things, I think I'm doing as much for the horse as I can. What we're looking at is an industry that has to be better service providers. The young farrier can't just go to a, a new customer and shoe the horse. He has to introduce that customer to his service. That part of his service is evaluating the horse before he starts and evaluating it, evaluating it to see how it moves, evaluating it to see what conformation and posture it has, and then talking to the owner to see what requirements they have for the horse. Communication, it should be instant. You know, if a client's got a question, they can send you a text or they can send you a phone call message and we should be responding to it quickly. And our industry, yes, our young people young farriers are not coming out fully prepared in the skills of business. They may come out better prepared with the physical skills as a farrier, but it can take some, some practice for them to get into business.